<laughs> Brandon Cannaday, come on in. Come on in. Good morning. Product Marketing Director, Storage Solutions at yes, good morning. Hey, good morning, I'm great. John. Brandon, how are you? Thanks for joining <laughs> us here today. You got I'm your coffee? To be here. Yes, thank you for uh, the opportunity to spend time with oh, you. Oh, of course, our pleasure. We're, we're thrilled to have you. I'm thrilled to be here. What do you it's think of the conference week. so far? The conference so far, you know, I can compare it to the conferences that I've been to over the last eight to 12 years with Dell. Yeah. Yep. And I've been to sales conferences, I've been to customer conferences, I've been to partner conferences. This is uh, right now by far, really, um, the one that I think has been the most beneficial for me. Really? Uh, it's the one where I've seen the most passion, not only from the Dell folks, yeah. but from the customers, you know? Yep. Because they seem to really be connecting with a few things, you know? One is they're connecting with the vision. Uh, number two, they're connecting with the people from Dell and our channel partners who are driving the business. Mm -hmm. And so the combination of building these new relationships and a really strong vision that they see Dell executing on uh, that has a very compelling uh, story and value prop, I think is just the foundation for phenomenal success. Uh, you know, this is our first year with the inclusion of Compellent and bringing yep. together the uh, Equalogic Users Conference, and I think we'll continue to build on this, and it's just going to get better and better. And it's been yeah. phenomenal. And so you think it is the change in all it of is. the acquisitions that, that they've been making that's created such an environment? I do. I think it's a. I mean, I think it's a real transition. Yeah. Um, that if you look at it from the Dell inside out perspective, it's a transition we're having to make from being you know pretty product centric mm -hmm. to being very much more solution centric. And so if I look at what that means, we talk from a sales perspective to customers at the time at which they're trying to make a product decision, but in solution selling, we need to be engaged with them much earlier in the process, okay. you know, from pre-sales to help them discover what their problems and opportunities might be. Mm -hmm. It's more about relationship building, mm -hmm. understanding the business. And so we're having to make that transformation. Okay. Customers are making that transformation because of the market and the requirements that are being uh, placed on our customers. And so you're seeing it now show up in the way we execute our, you know, our annual yeah, users conferences, yeah. right? In, in, it, in terms of, you know, solutions being involved earlier, yes. is that causing problems in other areas or yeah. costing more? Well, it's, it's not so much um, the cost per se. It's for me, because my team uh, owns the development of uh, solutions. Okay. We define the requirements for data management solutions. And so if I'm developing a product, I've got engineers in place. Typically my costs are around preparation of the sales field fairly close to product launch. Uh, and so a lot of our costs um, are, are actually sunk costs as well. Okay. Solutions on the other hand require that we be out in the field greasing the skid, so to speak, yeah. well before a product solution or a solution stack is going to launch. These sales cycles can be long. You know, it's not a, a couple of days or weeks <laughs> or months. It could be six, yeah. nine, 12 months. Of course. So we have to shift a lot of that activity to the left. Are you bringing on a different type of sales yes. person? Talk a little bit about investment there. Yeah, you bet. If you look at uh, where we started, with uh, opportunities uh, that were rich, for instance, in uh, healthcare, uh, as an example. Mm -hmm. um, we started based on a couple of things, one of which is customers had a very distinct pain point that we could solve with our unified clinical archiving solution that was differentiated, so that made sense. We also already had a significant amount of investment in the healthcare vertical. Okay, so you are, we already know the customers through our Perot acquisition, as an mm -hmm. example, a significant amount of uh, capability there already. So we knew that would be a quicker time to market, quicker right. time to revenue. Now, fast forward, we launched the email and file archiving solution, which is a fully integrated stack. Um, uh, and it integrates into which email products? Well, what we do is we support predominantly Microsoft and Linux uh, okay. email, as okay. well as uh, file systems, uh, NFS and SIFs. Um, we leverage uh, Commvault, Sampana 9, and Semantics Enterprise Vault platforms. Those are the two key platforms. Now, the integration is this. 
Uh, the, there's an API between those applications and our storage device, the DX Object Storage Platform. Uh, the API makes sure that the application's features are fully leveraged and uh, complementary to the DX Object Storage features for data management. In addition to that, we have a fully integrated set of services so that, for instance, if you buy the email and file archiving solution from Dell, you have a full staff of support from Dell. It's a single back to Pat, mm -hmm. as opposed to having to buy multiple components from different people and having multiple services contracts. You, so, ch you change the language. It's not throat to choke, it's back to Pat. It's a back to Pat. Uh -huh. I, I, I prefer to <laughs> focus on the, on the on positive. The positive yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's one way or the other, it's good, you know, going relationships. You want to have that person right. that yeah. you can rely on, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, the traditional model is you buy your application from your application partner, you have a services contract with them, uh, hardware from your hardware partner, services contract with them. With our integrated solutions, you have the full suite of uh, capabilities. Mm -hmm better together integrated to make sure that the right features are leveraged across the infrastructure, uh, but then for service and support and pre-sales, you know, Dell and eventually the enabled channel partners will be that one back to pat. In the route to market on the medical, some of the medical systems, yeah. so you've got yes. Perot Systems out there who's Correct. sort of conditioning the market. We keep hammering on this. Yeah, yes. well, you know, I'm, it's, it's, it's a good subject. It's a, it's a good subject, yes. right? Yes, Perot's um, been great. But, but um, our, but some of that goes out under sort of non pro uh, I mean, not Dell branded sort of solutions, right? Do, do these solutions go out Dell branded, and they're or they're yep. embedded in? I would I would consider the integrated solutions to be more co branded because uh -huh. the software application in a lot of cases is going to continue to maintain the brand of the application provider. Yeah. Are you selling them directly, or your yes. application providers are selling? No, them? we sell okay. directly. So okay. that's another part of the integrated stack is that even the application licenses are are sold through Dell. Okay. And so we price the solutions on an integrated basis so that we can optimize around Dell's you know, scale uh, uh, advantages. And so we negotiate with those partners to make sure that the pricing is, uh, is right. Uh, and we develop reference configs around the right kind of customer environments. But then the beauty beyond that is a lot of our customer environments do demand some sort of uh, customization. And we have the ability, for instance, to apply a DX object store if that's the right solution for the customer. Mm -hmm. We can deploy Equalogic if that's the right solution for the customer or a combination of the two. So we have that flexibility built into our delivery model. So one of the things yeah. that Dell's been noted for on the PC and server side is sort yes. of custom build to order rapidly. So yes. you know, I think we have at home, I think I counted seven Dell computers. Yes. You know, all, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's really bad. For a family of four, it seems like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, not at all. No, no, not at all. But I have a few, and I'm looking forward to replacing them. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but, so for some of these solutions that you're putting together, it's also sounds like it's very much custom built to order, but again, integrated. Custom so built to order, integrated, and the and the difference I would say is that Dell's. Uh, PC business was built specifically for online customization. You or I could go to the website, yeah. pick the right drive sizes. Some of our hardware components can be customized online like that. Uh, the solution stacks right now are bundled through uh, basically a, an interference layer uh, with our uh, sales specialists. So we actually get involved in the configuration to make sure that it's right in most cases. Right, yeah. Right, right. Uh, now, if a customer comes in and buys, for instance, a backup to disk target device that already has the media embedded, those are a little bit more uh, straightforward, less complex, and they can uh, be customized online. So you know, we try to offer online customization where we think it makes the most sense for our customers, because a lot of our customers don't want to have to go through that. It's not like buying a server yeah. where you know you need a certain amount of memory and a certain processor. Um, we're talking about sizing analyses so that you understand what uh, sizing requirements are for your storage environment, how many licenses you need on the media server, um, what RAID types uh, you want to support, etc. Yeah. So it's just not always uh, uh, right for online customization. You know, I, I used to manage Dell's uh, product data. 
okay. groups. And so this was the bills of material. The, the, okay. Yeah, bills of material, engineering change orders. Right. And uh, because we never built um, fixed config units, uh, we had many, many modules that were represented by bomb component part yep. numbers yep. that then had to be configured and validated together to make up that end unit. What that ended up doing was creating billions of permutations of possible right. configurations, right. which is great for choice, yeah. uh, but in some cases you could say maybe there's too much choice. Mm. So, you know, we think in the solutions area it's best if we can help uh, consult with customers to come up with the right config, and we'll go configure it on the back end. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's yeah. making it simpler for the customer. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. so you talked about email archive. You yes. talked about PAC systems or uh, uh, backup to disk. Are there any yep. other sort of solution sets that you can talk about? That Yeah. That, um, you bet. I'm real excited about an extension of our email and file archiving solution. You know, email and file archiving is focused on unstructured content. But the reality is customers still deal a lot with pains associated with structured content, databases. They're getting heavy, they get right. bloated. Yep. Uh, we're finding that a lot of our customers have applications that are no longer being used, mm -hmm. but they're still taking up space, they're still paying uh, licenses on it. Yeah. And so an extension of our email and file archiving solution will be to focus on structured content. Okay. Uh, it gives customers the ability to reduce fairly significantly the size of the database that they do have uh, through unique uh, dedupe and compression technologies. Is this from the Ocarina acquisition? Uh, partly from Ocarina, which will be on the back end mm -hmm. inside the storage device, but, but that's also not really through, on the database side, right? That's correct. Right. We uh, we have a partner in our ISV ecosystem. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, who, they presented with us called Rainstore. Okay. Rainstore. Yes. Okay. We announced um, a reseller agreement with them uh, earlier this week as a part of this okay. show. Oh, okay. That's maybe why we didn't hear about it. We've been yes. Here. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, we don't get out much. It's not. It's not a, yet a fully integrated stack, okay. it's a, a more loosely integrated stack, let's call it an enabled solution. Um, but the idea here is, is if we can help customers to deal with storage complexities, the growth challenges, not only on unstructured data, but with structured data, bring differentiation to the market associated with things like dedupe compression ratios. The, the neat thing about the, uh, the Rainstore enabled solution is that you can either retire applications completely or offload database uh, content without eliminating access to that content. Okay. So you can still have essentially um, real-time access to the database, even though that content's been archived mm -hmm. to a much more efficient platform for preservation and, right. and so, long-term retention. So okay. there are, yeah. we, we, with, with Phil, you were talking about how there seems to be another little sort of boom in, in uh, investment, in, in investment, mm -hmm. right? It's just, Yep. Particularly in the storage space around right. certain storage yes. functions that may be feature or markets, not necessarily systems. Yes. Some advice for people who, a lot of people, I think it was Darren Thomas says his phone is ringing off the hook. Yes. But, yeah. but any advice on how someone gets your attention to say, hey, this right. is. Yeah. Uh, from a customer's perspective? No, I mean or from a no. supplier. I'm from yeah. a startup. I'm a startup, yep. and I want to get your... I, I like the Equalogic platform. I think I've got some unique yes. functionality. How the heck do I get your attention? Well, you know, we internally, even though Dell is a $60 billion plus company, you know, I started with Dell when it was only $15.5 billion yep. uh, 12 years ago. And today we operate very similarly to the way we did then. We continue to maintain kind of this entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, and, you know, my team prioritizes the development of relationships with our partners. Okay. We rely on partners because, for instance, in the application space, they have expertise around certain data management practices mm -hmm. that can complement what we do and vice versa. But it would be silly not to leverage that as much as I can. So, in spite of being big, I'm a person. I build relationships. My team promotes the same types of uh of things, and if a cus if a partner, for instance, has a differentiated product that we can sell to a customer, they're mm -hmm. willing to pay for that differentiation. Mm -hmm. Then I want to talk. Okay. And we've done it. We've got an ISV ecosystem right now that um, is 19 or 20. Okay. In terms of having already been launched. Okay. 
Uh, a lot of it's focused around an API integration with our DX object store, but also some qualifications with Equalogic and eventually Compellent. So it's going to be a storage ecosystem, not a DX ecosystem. Mm. Uh, the DX just so happens to uh, benefit greatly from API development. Um, and we have a roadmap of uh, over 30. So we're continuously building partnerships. Okay, so if I'm, if I'm a potential partner, then yeah. what you want me to do is write my application to your API. Yes. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I do. So, so you want Would to you like to? You, little, you have an app. <laughs> <laughs> I know a few people who have apps. So, yeah. But yes. so so they need to make some upfront investment to do there, that. And there the is payoff, some upfront investment. And the payoff and and, and and what's the level of effort there? Well, it's. Um, l let me back up a little okay. bit because I think this is a great topic. Um, the DX, if we just focus on that, because of the API. Right. You know, other forms of file-based storage, traditional file storage the NFS and SIS protocols are ubiquitous, right? So right. the standards uh, are one of the, the benefits of kind of traditional file. There are uh, costs and complexities associated with it, and the DX and object-based storage fills a lot of that space. And you know, if we get a it's chance to IP talk about that, it'd be great. I, I, it's all HTTP address. HTTP front end, the right. power of the web, powers your storage device. To make it short and simple, think of the DX as a clustered uh, solution where you've got web servers right. that are tied to the internet and you've got a controller yeah. uh, and uh, you basically have unlimited scale. So some of the proven successes of the web, accessibility, ubiquity, mm -hmm. the ability to manage content regardless of, of uh, where it's located but to still be able to access it efficiently, yeah. um, the fact that uh, the devices on the internet don't have to have comprehension of one another, and so you can have a very globally distributed footprint. There are lots of things that just if you look at the, the power of the web, object-based storage is, is uh, similar. And that's why you see object-based storage is the foundational technology for all of the uh, private uh, public clouds, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, there are advantages. So, you know, traditional file still has a place inside a corporation or a small and medium business. Predominantly, if you have highly transactional content, if that content is changing a lot, it's good to be optimized around performance, RAID protection in case you lose a bit or a block. Um, but you're giving up some things as a result. You're giving up simplicity. You're giving up scalability. Object-based storage is optimized around preservation of content that's predominantly fixed. It's not changing. So if you think about inside of your organizations, I would guess that 80% of the content that you have stored hasn't been looked at in a while. I mean, let's face it. Sure. All those decks. Your videos are viewed all the time. Come on. Yeah. Well, no, not, not, all, not locally, not, you know, exactly. through no, the company. No, That's right. I understand, right. Yeah. Or if it's viewed today, it may be viewed a lot over the next week. Right. It might go dormant for a while, right. and then it goes hot again it's at some spiked, point. Sure. Right? spiked again. Exactly. So you need to be able to manage the content, not necessarily manage the infrastructure when it comes to this type of unstructured content. Right. Um, Object-based storage is optimized for things like longevity. We want to keep content around mm -hmm. for a long time, but I don't want to have to pay all the costs of management and, and so forth. Right. Uh, it's optimized around the management of the content based on the content itself because an object is nothing but a file plus its metadata. So the fact that you have metadata stored inside the storage device mm -hmm. now means you have the ability to manipulate the data because you know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Unlike in a file system where maybe you have a file name and who created it, right? So the combination of uh, unlimited scale, the ability to know what your content is, deployed on an architecture like the DX that's optimized through x86 uh, commoditized storage nodes that sit on the Ethernet network that are unencumbered by file system hierarchies with a flat address space that can store billions and trillions of files. I think the number on the Twitter post I saw was 10 to the 38th power, but the number is which is quickly undecillion yeah. is the number. Uh, but it's so big, we can't even comprehend it. Um, and then all those features combined allow you to manage this content automatically, right? So you don't have to deploy your resources to do it, let the storage device do it, okay? And so your resources can now be deployed to manage 
the primary storage data, mm -hmm. the stuff that's highly transactional, you know, changing yep. a lot, your SANS, your fiber channel uh, infrastructure, whatever. And let the dormant content that continues to get bigger and bigger, let it manage itself. Yeah. Free up all those resources to go do some really cool things like figure out what you can use your data for in terms of extracting value from the organization. That's what we all really want with data, right? So Figure out what it is and what I can learn from it. You know? So it, it opens up a value prop. You know, I talk to customers today a lot about freeing up storage resources to help them better manage storage growth and reduce costs. That's mm -hmm. cool. Eventually though, wouldn't it be great if we were using that content for real strategic business value. So better decisions. So the the, the so Michael talked about that yes. in his keynote. Absolutely. And that so the question is what sorts of search technologies, mm -hmm. mining technologies, data yep. aggregation technologies are gonna go in to to, to be able to make help people make better decisions. Yeah. Either for their businesses or for their selves and their health. Absolutely. Yeah. We have an ecosystem of partners that are also search and index providers that may be your classic kind of web oriented search uh, or are more oriented around enterprise search. And they're really two different beasts. We believe that the ability to really understand the content as opposed to just, for instance, basic text uh, search is going to be paramount. So you see a lot of our technologies are content aware. Oak Arena is an example, content aware. It knows exactly what type of content it is and applies a different algorithm right. to achieve optimum uh, compression or dedu. Uh, what we believe is right is to leverage content aware indexing and search engines that have built in intelligence for doing things quickly because you're going to be doing it with a lot of data. Uh, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to necessarily take up and have to add as much cost in processing power as you're saving in storage. Right. Um, you want to be able to get to this insight uh, quicker uh, and more efficiently, but also more effectively. So you want the search to be able to do things like, you know, uh, understand the difference between, um, you know, dog and, and man's best friend, but also realize that they're related and, you know, pull back sure. things that are similar. Uh, and we believe that the power of search index, along with the ability to, to, to bring content aware technologies to the market together create a lot of value for customers. So, you know, people say, well, how much money am I going to save on object store versus traditional file? And we, we go through that argument, but then we say, think of all the strategic opportunities that you can open up if you really know what your content is and have the resources available to go, you know, do things that uh, make your company better. So, so that consultative part, so yeah. a lot of companies don't know how to do that for themselves. No, they, they, don't. they have no, no. clue. No. That they, they know that there's technologies out there, but they don't know what they are yes. and they don't know how to apply them. Yes. So Dell can create a set of services around that. Your partners Correct. might be able to create a set of Absolutely. services. Where, how do you see that playing out with the Dell community? Because it is it. It's going <laughs> to be a transformation, just like the one on. we're going through now. Because it takes time, for instance, you asked about investment earlier. Yeah. We're investing a significant amount of money in hiring solution sales resources. These are people that know industries, know markets, know the product well enough, but can have the business conversation with the customer all the way up to the C-levels. And to hire those folks takes time, you know, especially in the quantities that we're looking for. So if you look at my solutions roadmap as an example, uh, our email and file archiving solution as a proxy, it can take six or nine months just to hire the people you need. And then the sales cycles can be, you know, because, six to nine months. Because, just out of curiosity, because yeah. we all care about jobs, yeah. uh, how many people are you looking to hire? Yeah, that's um, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, across the solutions organization, yeah. which just doesn't just include data management solutions because we have other solutions pillars okay. uh, around next generation data center and uh, networking and um, uh, next generation end user computing. But if you look across our solutions businesses, we're hiring thousands of new people to help okay. man the pre-sales and sales activities. And some of that activity is tied specifically to solution launches. Some of it's trying to get us caught up from okay. where we need to be, right? Okay. right? 
And you know, we went out and acquired some capability through um, a pro a couple of years ago. You know, I think that that's a viable option to, um, to potentially going forward. Do, yeah, if you want to hire a thousand people right now, you may yeah maybe more cost effective yeah. to hire a company. Absolutely, right. to buy a company. And in the right. meantime, you know, right. there are strategies that we employ. One is the channel is extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. We've got to figure out as a solutions organization how to enable a channel around solutions, which is different than enabling a channel around products. Right, but you still are going to need to be able to do that sort of deal registration process. To Absolutely. Say, I own this deal. Not and the beauty right. is a lot of the deal registration stuff is transferable. Okay. Um, the ability to train those folks takes different uh, sure. resources. Right. The collateral they want is different. You know, so there's a whole back end thing that we need to enable. But the other thing is our uh, application partners bring a heck of a lot of expertise to the table. I mean, you know, if you look at our archiving partners, uh, Semantic, obviously, uh, Commvault, we have other HSM partners um, across various industries, and they all know their businesses. And so we partner with them, especially early on, to enable sales. Uh, cooperative selling is kind of the way we refer to it. Um, but we can't do that forever because number one, it's not scalable, right? Uh, and number two, we need to be able to have those discussions. If a customer calls having a challenge with archiving or wants to know about a policy requirement, you know, we don't want to have to hand them off to somebody else, right? right? We've got to build the capability. And it's hard. It's hard. It, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a challenge, but we're a good execution company. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm confident we will be successful. So with all this hiring, you're pretty involved in the management of the people yes. to uh, help them, you know, go through the transformation. Absolutely. Uh, any obviously challenges are are there, yeah. and uh, but what are you finding is the most exciting and the most frustrating part? You know, what's exciting is uh, everybody that I've hired in and who my kind of colleague teams have hired in. Uh, they're really passionate around the direction that Dell is moving in. Mostly because they've already been out there talking to customers. They are solution sellers to begin with. Yeah. And so they see that it's valuable. They see it's something customers want. Mm -hmm. They're excited to see a brand like Dell coming to, uh, to the enterprise space with the same approach uh, or with, an, uh, with a proven approach. But they also like the fact that because it's Dell and with the technology moves we're making that it's a differentiated approach. So they feel... Uh, compelled to go out and have those conversations because they're yeah. confident that they can win. So their passion and energy when they come in is great. Um, the other thing I like is that it's forcing us to look at processes. I mean, we have product-oriented launch processes, yeah. um, and it's forcing us to look at how can we do things differently to enable solutions. And you know, some of the things that are great for solutions are actually going to be really good for product launches. I'll yeah. give you a great example. You know, product launch, it's typical to kind of keep things quiet all the way up until the end. All the collateral and the training comes together at the end, and you do a big splash, and then you launch the product. In a solution market, it's much better to grease the market with proofs of concept. It's much better to uh, grease the market with customer um, uh, proof points and references. Well, it seems to me like going out and doing that with products would be really beneficial too. Mm -hmm. Let's do it earlier, as opposed to waiting until you know a hard launch date. So I think we're going to learn a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be hard work, and we go back and figure out how to leverage it on the product side. The combination of the two is like one and one equals three, right? <laughs> uh, so that'll be good. Now the challenge is, is that it's just you know in the midst of trying to bring on compellent, in the midst of trying to bring on the other acquisitions. Yeah in the midst of integrating those things to create yeah. the better together thing, there's just a lot of work to do. Right. And, and you're a 60-ish you're billion dollar yep. revenue okay. company, and um, and the, the PC business represents what percent of that? I think it's about half. About half yeah. of that. So you're still, the enterprise business then is 300, uh, is 30 billion. Yeah. Yep. It takes a lot to move the needle. Right. Well, the needle, that's an interesting comment because that is, um, that is a challenge. And if I look at it from the standpoint of like solutions marketing, you know, my team comes to the table with solution concepts. 
And we look at the market and where the opportunities are, where Dell can be successful, where the market needs uh, differentiation, et cetera. Um, to move the needle on a $60 billion company is a lot bigger than to move the needle on a $30 billion company. Right. But even on a $30 billion company, just looking at the enterprise part of it, moving the needle is a lot. Yes, it is. And so the bar is way up here. My personal opinion is, is that you make, you move the needle with a lot of smaller opportunities. I mean, if you look at the acquisitions we've made, they are very sophisticated organizations that do in the, you know, when we pick them up in the you know, 150 to maybe just south of $200 million a year, I mean, that in and of itself to me is representative of the type of needle move that you want to make and then scale it out, yeah. right? So you've got very significant growth like we did with Equalogic. Uh, where you know it starts out at 140 million, but within four years it's a billion dollar business. Now that's great. You bring Dell scale to it, but you got to realize, I think, and be realistic that you're starting smaller. You know, you're going after yeah. markets that are 100 million a piece in terms of right. accessible revenue, right. and then you uh, scale out from there. Personal. Okay. Well, listen, it yeah. has been great having you on. Oh, I appreciate thank the you. perspective. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, you bet. Good advice for. Uh, Startups who want to partner with Dell yes. and uh, good uh, insight into the sort of the direction. So we do have um, our SDK as an example on the equal on the DX Object Store yep. okay. is posted online oh, okay. on our Dell Partner site. Okay. Um, cust- uh, partners can register, and we have a full team of people that will engage with them to make sure that their hands are held and that we do the business case assessments and that the technology integrations go well. Okay. As we move forward, this ecosystem really becomes a data management an optimization ecosystem. Okay. So, you know, eventually I hope to see um, some sort of compelling uh, position from Dell where we'll encourage the development of new capability. Because once you can use metadata richness Mm -hmm. with content, eliminate complexities of having to manage constantly the association between the app layer and the storage device, you can really bring features to market that are that can be compelling for customers in terms of unleashing value that's yeah. in data. So I think we'll see a whole new set of investment around data management types of features that we don't even know today. And so I'd like our team to be a part of it as well as our channel partners and yes. customers. So uh, I look forward to maybe talking to you guys again in the future. Good. Absolutely. All right, Brandon. Thank you Great. so much. You we bet. really Thank appreciate you. it. Have a great one. You-